Uh, true thing could have been either. It could have been uh, a lot of uh, starring roles out there this afternoon from both sides. Chelsea and Manchester City. Jamie Carragher's joined us. Uh, you've had the time to walk from the gantry to here to collect your thoughts. How do you sum it up? Brilliant. It's just the Premier League at its best. And you're thinking of the game that we all watched last Monday and everyone felt like they were talking about that game for days afterwards. I think this will be the same. It was, it was fantastic. Uh, and it just felt right that Chelsea got the equaliser. I know Man City fans would be disappointed, but it just felt like there shouldn't have be been a winner in that game. It was just that good. Credits to both players. I think I heard you on comms saying it was a privilege to be here. That was the same for me in the commentary box. <laughs> <laughs> for all of us, though, wasn't it, Daniel? Very much so. I think the game provided everything we probably didn't expect, you know, in terms of how many goals back and forth. You know, we, we expected probably City would have controlled the game a lot more, but it seemed as if it was almost like a, a basketball game in football form where it was back and forth, back and forth, chances, barging, all types of stuff going on. It was such an exciting game to watch. But you said before the game you thought Chelsea would get something. What made you think that today? I just think they've done really well in the big games. I thought there's... You know, when you talk about atmospheres at certain stadiums, maybe I've commentated here maybe more than, than other places, but I always feel like it can, it can get going here at Chelsea when they get up ahead of steam and put a bit of pressure on it. I, th I think in some ways it also shows how good City are, because I don't think City were anywhere near the best. And Chelsea, I thought, were fantastic, but it still finishes 4-4. You know, that still shows the sort of probably the gulf between, you know, both teams, really, and that's there. But I think, uh, I think what Pochettino's done in big games is fantastic. I think he's... I think you can almost see him as a manager going up against Klopp, Guardiola, Mikel Arteta, and he hasn't quite got the tools that they've got. I know they spent a lot of money, people will say that, but he hasn't. And when you look at the team on paper and the setup, it's still short of what the other top teams have got. But what they've done in big games, I think, is a real feather we, in the I mean, cap of the manager. We do talk, Jamie, don't we, about uh, points against the traditional big six. They managed mm -hmm. four in ten games last season, and that's eight in four games already. So they've doubled it in four games, what they managed across all of last mm. season already. They've, they've got a point against Arsenal and Liverpool. They've won at Spurs. Uh, sorry, I've got it. I've given, I've given them a victory here. <laughs> <laughs> six, points. Out there. six points. Six points they've got already. And with Manchester City, it's not the kind of game that we sort of associate with them. That's almost lack of control. Yeah, I, I think it's more down to Chelsea and what they did. I thought obviously, they had a game plan. They wanted to be energetic. They wanted to press. And a lot of teams, when they play Man City, they just sit back and go in that low block and say, OK, break us down. Chelsea was like, not today, we're going to have a go. And the way Man City play, because they dominate the ball so high up on the pitch, there's always areas where you can counter-attack. And with Sterling and Cole Palmer up there, it's just always going to cause teams problems. 